Today's movie marks the end of an era. The era of Tracy Lawrence taking her clothes off in movies. This whole thing has the sound of something very unethical. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Jim Wynorski's cult classic alien invasion flick, Not of This Earth. Released in 1988, Not of This Earth is Wynorski's sexy remake of Roger Corman's 1957 film of the same name. We probably wouldn't talk about it all that much these days if not for one key thing. Marks the last time Tracy Lords appeared topless on screen. Lords, who crossed over to the mainstream from the world of adult cinema, thought she'd be taken more seriously if she kept her clothes on in movies. It must have worked because she's one of the few actresses to successfully transition from that particular genre of filmmaking to actual Hollywood success. But enough about that. Can not of this earth kill enough earthlings to earn the coveted five barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by patrons Bradley Keen, Miles Cornelius, and Shannon Pompetti McCann. I also have to give a second shout out to Miranda Provost. I called her Amanda in the last video because I'm an idiot. Sorry, Miranda. But hey, you're a Sick Flicks trivia question answer now. The only person to get a second shout out because I screwed it up. Anyway, if you'd like to help sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment and description below. Every dollar helps keep the show running when I'm hit with bogus copyright claims and community guidelines demonetizations. And now, let's get bloody. We open with this card. Miracle, eh? I suppose it is a miracle they got Tracy Lords to do a topless scene in a mainstream movie in retrospect. Wait a minute, this is a universal movie? Oh wait, this is the actual movie. Except I don't think this footage is from this movie. Fun fact, Not of This Earth borrows footage from Corman classics like Battle Beyond the Stars, Galaxy of Terror, Forbidden World, and more. Remember kids, recycling is important. Man, look at these graphics. Sega CD was amazing. And say what you will, but this dude really knows how to push buttons. But don't get attached to the sci-fi stuff, because now we're on Earth. Why do I feel like we just wandered into the start of Night of the Creeps? Well, they're making out, here comes the man in black. No, not Johnny Cash, this dude. Well, he's skulking about, our lovebirds head to the back seat. Looks like Joe Spinell is lurking around out here. Then things get weird. I know some people like a little choking during sex, but generally not from a random third party. I mean, I don't think this is what they meant by lending a hand. Oh, look, it's Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, so that's what was in Marcellus Wallace's briefcase. Not gonna lie, kind of a letdown. Anyway, this chick has a real pain in the neck. This whole experience has been pretty draining. Also, I'm feeling like the guys who made Night Trap might have seen this movie. Oh shit, it's not Tommy Lee Jones, it's Arthur Roberts! Arthur Roberts playing a blood-sucking alien is still more believable than him being an American ninja fighting Cho Kasugi in Revenge of the Ninja. Just saying. Oh shit, I think my edible just kicked in. Roger Corman presents. Ah, that's like music to my ears. Looks like someone did a terrible job cutting out the letters on this title card. And starring Tracy Lords in her first mainstream non-adult film role. We last saw her way back in Shock 'em Dead. Man, these credits are exciting. She misses all footage from other movies. Here's the monster from Piranha. Whoa, Roger Lodge? I bet he sent them footage from this movie when he auditioned to host Blind Date. And directed by Jim Wynorski. We last covered a Wynorski film when we tackled Chopping Mall. Fun fact, Wynorski made a bet with Corman prior to filming that he could shoot all of this movie in 12 days. He wrapped at 11 and a half. And now that we've seen all these exciting shots from other movies, Arthur Roberts is going to chauffeur us over to the actual film. Inside, we meet nurse Tracy Lords. Look, you're the fifth guy this morning to ask me to check out his throbbing member. Roberts looks a little stiff here. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, not like that, you pervs. I mean his performance. Anyway, Roberts is here to see the doctor about getting some blood. I must have blood. I'm dying. But Dr. Rochelle is like, damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a Renfield. Too bad for him, Roberts isn't taking no for an answer. Look into my eyes. Wait. But the doc's standing firm. I can't give you a transfusion, but I can shoot you up with a healthy blast of trend. You'll be on the way to Gainesville in no time. And now it's time for stock footage science. The doc isn't sure what's going on. So it's a good thing he has a microscope, just so he can look into it. And Arthur Roberts is going to get his transfusion. I can swear I've seen other Tracy Lords movies start this exact same way. Plus, he's got an indecent proposal for her. I wish to employ you. 
Would $1,000 a week be sufficient? Well, that sounds fair, but sponge baths are extra. Outside, they meet up with Officer Roger Lodge. I'm not sure if this is the weirdest episode of Blind Date ever, or if they're going to start a new version of the village people. Oh god, Benny's going to try to pick her up with the old I need to check your high beams line. If he starts frisking her for contraband, I'm calling some other cops. This tense situation is finally diffused when Raj gives Arthur a warning. I'm not going to write you a ticket this time, but don't let me catch you parking here again. From there, Mr. Johnson, and man, I really hope his first name is Rod, heads home. I wonder if he's going to finally run into Will Smith's Agent J. He doesn't find Will, but he does find this guy, Jeremy. Dude looks like someone left the motion smoothing setting on for his face. Well, it's only noon, but I sure could use a little pick-me-up. And I've earned it. One of the big selling points of this house was that it came with its own built-in blood freezer. That's handy. Back upstairs, Johnson catches his manservant trying to sample the goods. By God, he's locked in the claw! Man, you'd think my JR would suck less with all of this practice. And now, it's time for another great moment in horror film acting. Uh, would you like me to make dinner for you tonight? That will not be necessary. I will be dining. Out. Man, he's almost good enough to host this show. Then we jump over here. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't this the dog scene from Humanoids from the Deep? Looks like he's wandered into beyond darkness, judging by all this fog. Then this chick starts to investigate. But all she finds is a dirty dishes jump scare. <laughs> yeah, those dried on stains are terrifying. If this all looks vaguely familiar to you, it's because it was all taken directly from Humanoids from the Deep. I haven't seen footage stealing this brazen since Bruno Mattei's heyday. Then she gets a phone call. It's just Roger Corman telling her they're not paying her royalties for reusing this footage. Smirnoff, Bacardi, Seagram's. Hey, there's no J&B in that bar. Party foul. Man, what the hell? This isn't even the same movie. Come on, Jim Wynorski. Normally, I'd make a back in our other movie joke here, but since we were actually in a totally different movie for the past five minutes, I'm being serious. She runs into manservant Jeremy, who's got a growth he wants her to check out. I bet Tracy Lords has more lines of dialogue in this scene than she had in all of her earlier films combined. Inside, it looks like Mr. Johnson is reading up on copyright law to see if he can sue Corman if he reuses this footage in another movie. Oh yeah, this dude definitely looks like Mickey Rourke with the motion smoothing setting set to max. Then it turns into a Pearl Jam song, because Jeremy has spoken. Enough discussion, Jeremy. After some more jibber jabber, he shows her her room. Whoa, this is way nicer than the rooms we used in my previous films. With Lords down for the night, Johnson decides to catch up on some work. Cut my price gun, let's get to cutting costs. These prices are not of this earth. How oh, sweet, he's got a secret Twitch studio. Greg Allman, is that you? Do <laughs> kids even remember the Allman brothers? Christ, I'm old. Hello, Cleveland! Are you ready to rock? And what the hell? Yeah, sure, this seems like a good place to toss in some stolen footage from another Corman movie. I gotta say, making a feature-length movie in 11 and a half days is less impressive when half of it is just footage you spliced in from other flicks. For our next number, we're gonna do a little song called Midnight Rider. Turns out, Greg Allman has some bad things in mind for humanity. If the Earth blood preserves your life, Phase 5 will be the conquest, subjugation, and pasturing of the Earth's subhumans. And with that, Greg Allman is gone. I don't think he's doing an encore. The next morning, Johnson's ready to hit the gym. Just let me drink my creatine and I'm good to go. Then we get what you all came for, the Tracy Lord's post-shower scene. I can't show it because Prudtube hates boobs, but she told the cameraman to get a good shot of her because it was going to be the last time anyone would see her boobs on film. After that, Lords and Johnson played doctor. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. I mean, she's giving him a checkup. Later that day, this vacuum salesman shows up. He sucks. Unfortunately for him, he not only fails to close the sale, but he gets incinerated for his troubles. I haven't heard of hot deals, but this seems ridiculous. And back at the pool, Tracy Lords is doing her best Bunny Lebowski impression. Over in another movie, Dr. Rochelle is getting accosted by Pam Shriver. Pam Shriver. That's a deep cut even for this show. Fun fact, that's actually former penthouse pet and B-movie icon Monique Gabrielle. She's almost unrecognizable here. Back at Johnson's place, it appears they've selected a new pope. And Tracy Lords is ready to find out if there's any truth to the old adage of where there's smoke, there's fire. Man, it's a good thing she learned how to pick locks. It's opened a lot of doors for her over the years. And now she's in the basement. I bet she's going to find Freddy's glove in there. Later, Johnson meets with Dr. Rochelle, who has a diagnosis. Your blood is behaving in an impossible manner. The agglutinin is breaking down. 
destroying the basic structure of the blood itself. Let's ask Lance Henriksen what he thinks about this. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> At any rate, I will say it's good Johnson's terminal condition isn't keeping him from dating. After they depart, prepare the automobile. I want you to take me out tonight. This seems ominous. I bet he told Sho Kasugi about my heroin importing business. And apparently he cuts his product with cremated remains. Since things were getting boring at the house, I suppose this is a great time to take a road trip. Oh look, they found the bangles. As it turns out, Johnson wants to hire them for a private concert. I want all three of them returning with us tonight. After he dispatches them, and I can't show that because boobs, we get even more boobs with a Tracy Lord sex scene. Sure, Raj is a cop, but I don't think this is what she meant when she asked him to show her his nightstick. Downstairs, Johnson's hard at work on a Cyclops from the X-Men cosplay. Looking pretty sweet. Meanwhile, let's check in on Chief Mickey Rooney. Hi, I'm Mickey Rooney, and I'm calling on behalf of Value Guard Life Insurance from Garden State Life. He's got some exposition to share, too. Damn, newspapers are having a field day. Dracula strikes again. So basically, we need to put out an APB on Dracula. Oh, hey, Greg Allman did come back for an encore. Sweet, I hope it's rambling, man. The next day, Tracy puts on her best toilet seat cover and takes Johnson's red liquid to the lab. Do you have any idea what it is? Cherry Kool-Aid, Campari, V8, could be any of those. Hey, it's Kelly Maroney. When her Fonorski was still trying to get a date with her. But the doc puts it to the sniff test. Hey, wait, this is just Hawaiian punch. Then Roger Lodge calls Tracy Lords. Honey, have you seen the shaggy throw rug from the bathroom? No, why do you ask? Meanwhile, the doc's like, hey, can you stop tying up the office line? I'm expecting a call from Mickey Rooney about some life insurance. Then, from completely out of the blue, the movie morphs into Beach Babes from Beyond. Not gonna lie, this is the weirdest Ray-Bans campaign of the 80s. Here, you may wear these. See, I wasn't kidding. That night, Dr. Rochelle proves that three is definitely not company as he crashes Raja's fancy date. Guess I'll have the breaded veal cutlets. Oh, Doc, so glad you could join us. Meanwhile, Arthur Roberts is putting his ninja skills to the test by breaking into the clinic. <laughs> Let's see Shokasugi do this. Turns out he just broke in to steal the Negroni mix. Oh, yeah, just shoot it straight into my veins. What Johnson doesn't know is that we've secretly replaced the Doc's regular Negroni mix with this new batch spiked with rabies. Can they tell the difference? She's doing the drunk walk of shame when she stumbles right into the misfits. Danzig isn't going to give her an autograph, but he will give her a taste of his pimp hand. But you know what they say, one good pimp hand deserves another. Meanwhile, over in this Claudio Fergasso movie, this chick is getting stalked by the shadow. Wow, it's like Fergasso and Tarantino collaborated on this scene. There's just a Beyond Darkness level of fog here. I'm guessing this is borrowed footage again, but I'm not sure what they stole this from. At any rate, at least we get some gore, finally. And then she busts into the doc's office looking more rabid than Marilyn Chambers. Unfortunately, she doesn't make it, and whoa, she looks like she's been glazed. At least she died as she lived with her sunglasses on. Over in our other movie, Roger Lodge calls Tracy Lords. Hey, Tracy, Corman and Wynorski just wanted me to ask you if you'd consider doing another topless scene. Motion smoothing Mickey Rourke's like, I think you should do it. Tell Corman and Wynorski to get bent. I'm going mainstream. They head downstairs to investigate, but all they find is the blob. But hey, going downstairs means we can watch Tracy Lords going upstairs. Jim Wynorski knows you like the jiggle. Downstairs, Jeremy finds the vacuum guy. Looks like it's scalding hot in there. Look, Mr. Corman, I said no more topless scenes. God, it's like a party line in this place. He's got Tracy Lords cornered, but look out. Jeremy's got a gun. Man, it really is a Pearl Jam video. But too bad for Jeremy, he brought a gun to a laser eye fight. Lords flees, but it's pointless because Johnson has her in the bear hug. Filmed in Jiggle Vision. They probably blew at least half the budget on tape to keep the top half of that dress on. Aw oh, man, someone dropped a log right in the middle of the road. Would you believe that? Man, she ran so fast she caught up with daylight. Continuity is hard. Johnson does catch her, but don't worry, Ponch and John are on the way. And now it's night again. Oh look, they filmed right outside Wynorski's house. With Rog chasing Johnson, Tracy heads back to book her one-way ticket to Davana. He's really gonna rack up the frequent flyer miles. And then, in the most anticlimactic ending ever, Johnson drives off a bridge. Huzzah, I guess. Tracy then breaks out of her trance. I've been in a lot of blue movies, but never like this. And title mention, drink. But I feel a swerve ending coming. 
Wait for it. Yeah, there it is. Swerve ending, freeze frame, and a card followed by a sequel setup. That's the trifecta, baby. So, what have we learned from Not of This Earth? Well, for starters, the Tracy Lords could hold her own in a B-movie. A lot of adult film actresses thought they could cross over to the mainstream, but Lords actually did it. She doesn't look out of place here. Beyond that, this is your typical Corman production. Cheap, but fun almost in spite of itself. I'm a big fan of Jim Wynorski, and this is one of the prime examples of why. Dude just makes silly, fun B-movies that deliver exactly what you'd expect. But enough about that. Can not of this earth disintegrate enough humans to earn a five barf bag rating? Are you kidding me? No chance. But let's go to the gore card. In terms of gross anatomy, not of this earth is pretty tame. Half the gore is stolen from other movies, and none of it is particularly memorable. We're treated to two stabbings, some human remains, a wicked case of rabies, and that's about it. There's not enough gore here to justify anything higher than a one barf bag rating. Not of This Earth isn't a sick flick, but it's still well worth seeing for B-movie fans, Corman acolytes, and Tracy Lord's admirers. Looking for another movie where a bunch of scream queens do their thing? Then be sure to check out my review of Sorority Babes in the Slimeball Bolorama. You'll find the link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.